uh, welcome uh, some of the any uh, final remarks from the panelists. Uh, you know who would like to uh, share any additional information uh, from anybody. Um, go, 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 go. This way, so everybody get. It. Right. <laughs> you will get the last one. Yeah. Well, uh, I think I mean one. I think very important. This is very fast step. So so we are. I mean coming in together. I really thanks for everyone today. You know to join us. Uh, but this is not, you know, the, the, the just one time. I, think I definitely agree with the, the regulators, regulators. I think that we should be more events. But one thing I also want to highlight is that not just the social media as the social media. I think that today media as, you know, print media, broadcasting media, I think it's all are important. Because I think I'm, I'm very glad to see a lot of medias today, you know, to do media as an interview. I think it's important they play the role as well uh, to educate in the public. So I, I would like to emphasize, you know, using broadcasting, printed, and also some of the writers, you know, like so influential writers, they should be educating right way, you know, that will be helped as well. I think that my, uh, the last final thought I think is a very simple thing. I, I came to the mind, you know, which I, I'm from Mandalay, so what happened in Mandalay impacted me a lot, honestly. I mean, in, in, uh, I born in the place, so you know that actually uh, start think made me think a lot about it. Uh, I, I kind of see the community in the three steps. Uh, very first important is the trust building. I think we have to trust building. We have to, to reach out to the community, and then uh, we have to build trust trust building. And then we need the common direct communication. Other than, uh, mean that or not somebody tell you so, or you heard from someone else. So if these community leaders are in contact, and they have a communication, and they do have a trust, I think that's a better way to verify, better way to lead the community, say, which is right, which is not right, right? So I think, again, will be the uh, direct communication, or open communication, I like to call it. Uh, within community leaders, we have open communication with all the community leaders from, from various groups, very diverse groups. Uh, and then the third, I think, is uh, the, the, in this framework, we should be collaboration. So when we reach out to the community, it's not just one group or the other. I think we should work together to reach out to the community. I think that is a more effective way, working together with community leaders from all sides and all groups to reach out and educate them. I think then this is the exercise we had to do it, not a short term, you know, starting from the town, starting from the, maybe now we're starting from the Yangon, then from Mandalay, from the cities, and, you know. So I think the long way, I think it will, it will definitely work and pay back. I think, I, think, I think we have, to me, we are in the junction. We can make it left or we can make it right. We can make it what and best for the country and everybody to prosper and the technologies and economics and social and education. Or we can be, this is the, the evil tool that, making turn upside down and political crisis and, and, and all the problems. So I think we as the community, we have to take a leadership and a responsibility, and not us um, or, uh, by the powers or any reason, but us as everybody. Every individual has a role and responsibility for that, and, and especially for community leaders, they will feel that way, they will empower the way, and I think that's that's, that's we have to work on. Because we are in the generation, we can make it, Either way, we want to make it the best for the country or we want to make it the worst for the country. And this is a very important time, and I ask you, guys, you all to work and to make it for the better. That's, Thank that, you. that's great uh, input. Um, you know, as one of the, um, the very famous director at you know, one of the uh, Oscars said, uh, we choose love over hate. Yeah. So we, let's choose love over hate. Alex, <laughs> yeah. like, yes. Yeah, sure. So, so thanks, Chris. Those are, those are great comments. Uh, I, would, I would just say that um, this is a very, very exciting time uh, in, in Myanmar. I'm, I'm extremely new to the country. I've been here for a couple of days. Uh, looking forward to, to meeting many of you after this forum and, and staying in touch and taking other trips to, to Myanmar in the future. Um, but it is, it is an extremely exciting time uh, for for folks involved in technology and in community issues in Myanmar. Um, one advantage that, that uh, is often forgotten when we're talking about these issues is that um, in large part, uh, internet users in Myanmar get to skip a lot of the bad stuff that, uh, for example, growing up in the U.S., we had to deal with so extremely, extremely low internet. Uh, sorry, sorry, extremely low, uh, slow speed uh, for downloading pictures and, and so forth. That, that's going to change very rapidly here, and you're going to get to skip a lot of the, the, the painful stuff. Um, also, a lot of a lot of uh, fraud and things like that that were very easy to perpetrate in you know the late 90s and early 2000s in the U.S. Online, online banking platforms have solved a lot of these problems. And so when they come to Myanmar, I think they'll, they'll be a lot more successful and a lot less, uh, a lot less pain involved, I think, when they, when they uh, do come here. And I think you're going to see a lot of uh, technological applications 
that really do make an impact here. So I mentioned banking, but also uh, farming. That's that's a, an area that, that sees a lot of impact when technology is introduced to the sector. So an, an example in India is uh, a, a very simple application. It can be through SMS or, or Internet that tells farmers when they should or should not bring their products to market. These things seem very simple, but they save people days and days of travel time uh, to, to the market and, and save people a lot of money and, and difficulty. So um, again, very exciting time. Um, Google is, is trying to do more and more here. So uh, at this point, we're focused on making sure our products and services are useful to more people in the country. So uh, you know, we, launched, uh, we launched the search engine in, in Myanmar language last year, and we hope to continue to do more uh, in the language that's, that's useful to, uh, to, to many people in the country. Um, I would also just mention that Google now has a Google Developers Group in, in uh, Yangon, so I would encourage you to, to look at their pages on social media, on Facebook and uh, Google+, Plus, our own social network, and to try and in involve yourself in, in those sorts of activities if you are interested in, in developing uh, for Android. Um, so anyway, looking forward to, to meeting and speaking with you uh, in, in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Mia? Oh, thank you. Um, I I guess I want to go back a little bit to um, some more strategies and examples that um, can also be helpful in addition to sort of shifting um, to helping um, people feel empowered to find solutions um, and also talk a little bit um, about the trends that we often see in different parts of the world um, around positive what we call counter speech um, and I think we've had some great examples here locally with the flower speech and is it Panzagar, is that the correct Panzagar, pronunciation? Yes. Yep. Um, and I think you know that's a great example and one where you know everyone here in this room can sort of leave today and start be role models of um, positive and constructive use of social media and lead by example and look at some of those great examples with Flower Speech and others to think about how we can all um, sort of through our own social networks online um, sort of help spread the information that we've talked about here today um, and sort of start from the moment that we leave. And so we're looking forward to not only working um, across um, uh, the community here to make sure that we've got localised information to help spread the messages but also to get your feedback about other ways that we can be working constructively together. So thank you. Thank you very much, Mia. John? Uh, yeah, I think the flower speech example is a great one. Um, you know, the Asia Foundation has been working in Asia for over 60 years and so our experience across the region is, is uh, that civil society is a great partner in solving problems um, because civil society is the best types of civil society organizations are lightweight and flexible can go into a particular problem area and quickly try a few uh, solutions. If they don't work, they can try something else. It's, they're a lot more flexible and dynamic. So um, that's why we support civil society organizations as well as work with the media. Uh, we work very closely with our government partners in every country that we work. Uh, we also work with religious leaders when, when we need to uh, communicate with uh, communities across a, a particular far-flung region. Um, because I think, again, I said this before, you know, it's not a, a problem of hate speech and like many other challenging issues is not a, a government solution. It's a governance solution. And what, we're, what I mean by that is it's, it's quality, good governance is a partnership of all of the leaders across all of the sectors of a society. It's not just government. It's people in the media. It's people in academia. It's business people. Um, everyone needs to participate in order to solve these problems because that's, that's how you give the people in the countryside and people in Yangon and elsewhere uh, the right kinds of tools to, uh, you know, solve those problems because, you know, again, when you see something online, you want to do something about it. We need to make sure that uh, people have the, the right kinds of opportunities to respond. So. Thank you. Diana? Um, just want to repeat the importance of drawing on, on partnerships, both with civil society um, and getting community-based input, and also um, taking advantages of resources in the region, whether that's um, other regulatory agencies who've gone through similar processes, um, parliaments, etc. Good 
Thank you. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this should be something that led from the community and the civil society. This is not uh, an initiative that is being developed by the government or the regulator. But I know I have two points to say. Uh, number one, as as a regulator, you know, it is our job. As a government, it's our job to protect our citizens, our country. So uh, we need to develop a proper and credible, which can be work here in Myanmar, the legal and policy regulatory frameworks. You know, that is consistent with international best practices. That is one thing that we need to do. And, and I, uh, we will be very happy to work together with the Isha Foundation, Google, and every social media, as well as the, the international community and local community to work on that. And the second one is more important is, like, like I consistently repeat, it's awareness. So it, awareness in terms of we, we are not tackling the only – the, the only issue of the hate speech on, on the social media, we are talking about a lot, a whole range of different issues like protecting yourself. Uh, you know, even, even in Myanmar, even the government officials, my colleagues or whoever I'm, I'm you know, dealing, working with, even their account is hijacked, they don't know what to do. So the hijack account, you know, protecting yourself, protecting uh, what is in your email, if you are, we are talking about Google, or what you post on the, on the Facebook. So, once, one happened, well, once it happened, and we need to protect. Uh, so awareness campaign at every level is important. And this is something that we have to do together, not only as a media group, but also with other civil groups. Uh, that's the same thing that I'm, I'm giving you as an example to me. We have the effort to start this flower campaign. It's, an, it's something that should be carried out at, at the, uh, the wider range, and I think this, this is the first step, and uh, we would like to see similar steps in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, how much time do we have for um, question and answer? 20. Good. 20 minutes? Not two minutes, right? Uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, get our, you know, the second part of our session started. Um, we're, um, uh, do we have a microphone here? Yes. 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 And um, you know, as you ask question, if you can state your name and your you know your association uh, to ask a question, and then like I said, uh, if you can make the questions as questions, uh, as your uh, personal statements, uh, that would be uh, appreciated. Mic microphone. Microphone. No? Uh, thank you so much, Ben, uh, uh, for the for the great contribution. Um, I have a, a, there's a lot of questions that, that pop up in my mind, um, but uh, I think as a, as a user, uh, we talk a lot about the community, and we talk about the, a, a lot of the uh, of the uh, you know uh, laws and all like that. But as a as a user, the whole community, but there's need to be an interactive between the community and the providers are just you guys. Uh, I think one of the, the key things that really face a user, because B B Myanmar is still a, is a very low-tech uh, area, uh, but like um, he says that when, when an account is hijacked, uh, for example, like I have my own experience, my account has been hijacked, but th what is important in the Facebook or on the Google is that you, you create the credibility by, by posting all these, these things, and you, you create the followers. But when you got the followers, then you, your, your account was hijacked. And the hijack was not, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, I work in the US for 32 years. So I, I came, I'm a, a technically savvy guy. So I thought that during around April, there was a big hole uh, in the internet. So I was thinking the highway, uh, high technical stuff. but. In actual reality, uh, a tracker was put into because I stupidly accepted the software, and then, uh, then, then, then they they hijack all my uh, all my password. So I don't know what to do. But the biggest problem that that arises from that is uh, that goes with the hate speech. Also, is when someone someone has a, a, a credibility or enough following, and if you use that misidentification. Um, misidentity and started to promoting the hate speech that it can spread uh, rapidly or it has the effect because that person has a credibility but there's no mechanism 
for us to stop. Uh, it, it was just like when, when, when we have this, you know, the, the voicemail automatic machine where you, uh, you around and go around and around, and I got really frustrated, you know. So we talk a lot about the community and the community involvement, but when uh, there must be a mechanism to how to communicate between the users such as us uh, who got into trouble and then uh, the providers such as you guys, uh, oh, there must be some, if you walk out between the government and, uh, and, and like Uche uh, Tumpei and, and the guys who can represent, so that if somebody hijacked, because we are not as, you know, uh, not everybody is as organized as, I, I, I create my Facebook account 10, 15, 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I think. I don't remember when I created. And, and also when we, the Google account, they got all my secrets. But luckily, I was smart enough to use a separate account. So, so the key thing here is not only hijacking your account, if the account is a credibility in the followers, you can also create a false identification and a false spot. Let's say somebody anonymously or, or have a, a, a vicious uh, idea, you can go and uh, um, hijack by, by simple putting a tracker. Huh? So then the effect will have a negative. If, like, you know, uh, I understand that Sarah whether the account has been hijacked also. And then if that has happened, and if he says negatively, and that can really stock a spark, and which is dangerous for our country with facing a lot of difficulty. So I just want to know how uh, Facebook and Google, uh, can you guys create a, some, kind, some kind of entity uh, that you can, uh, you can work on it? And another thing is, in, in Myanmar, it's, it's not, it's a, we are a very personalized society. Okay? There are people who like you and who doesn't like you, and, and they can report it uh, without even a hate speech. If you do not agree with this person, and, and how does Facebook uh, um, do the arb arbitration? I mean, how do you know that this is a hate speech or not? Uh, because then you can come in and, 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 and um, the gentleman from the, uh, Google says that uh, you, you do the arbitration very fast, but manually, it's, it can be done manually because we have a very low number. Two million is nothing compared to billions. But are you doing in a software-wise or are you doing in a logical sense? or just doing the identification, just identification doesn't work. Uh, how do you define the logical statements or logical interpretation? Or are you doing the data mining and taking out all those things? Uh, there's a lot, I I'll just stop here. Thank you very much. So there was a lot there. Um, <laughs> uh, so let me, let me try to unpack a couple of the things that I think that you mentioned. Um, so just in terms of the security, I mean, I did talk earlier at the start where I really encourage everybody to go and set those advanced security settings on their account to minimize the risk of their account being compromised. Um, we do run a number of technical solutions in relation to account security. Um, I am not the security engineer, so this is my layperson interpretation of what, that, what those are. But uh, we do work with um, different security companies like Trend Micro, um, where we try to auto-identify if somebody might have had their account uh, infected by malware. And we can tell that, for example, if someone is sending like more friend requests in a minute than is humanly possible, then we think that could be a um, that could be a, a computer generated malware um, on their account. And we will then do what I referred to before, which is checkpointing the account, which says you know we're worried that you, your account has been hacked. Um, you know, please go through this remediation process. So we do have a number of technical tools where we're trying to secure the accounts um, on a regular basis. Uh, in relation to you know, how do we um, stop uh, people who just don't like each other having content removed on the basis that it's hate speech, um, uh, there's a number of things that we do. I mean, that is all human review. Um, so when a report gets made for things like hate speech or bullying and harassment, that gets queued up for a person to look at. Um, and so we have some uh, guidance for them about you know, how we define hate speech. Um, and that's where we then need to work with people in different parts of the world, including here in Myanmar, so that we understand you know, what constitutes hate speech here. Um, but we're, we're trying to always avoid a situation of people disagreeing versus genuine hate speech under our terms. 
Thanks, Mia. Yeah, so, so uh, I'll, I'll take a few of those issues one after the other. Um, with regard to hate speech, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about our process. So uh, as I mentioned, the scale of activity on the Internet is huge, um, but, but the scale of, let's say, hate speech requests is not so huge. Um, 